About as positive of news as you could have asked for this offseason just broke for the Missouri football team. Plus, I've seen a lot of discussion on if you could guarantee one victory, would it be the Cotton Bowl or against Kansas in basketball tomorrow? Well, I think the answer is pretty obvious, and I'll also want to scout the Jayhawks coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou. Your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I am John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And you know what? I think I'm going to keep emphasizing the the until we play the Ohio State University in the Cotton Bowl. But you know what? First, I also want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. And it's looking like Missouri's 2024 football season is looking a little bit easier than it otherwise might have. As Frank Acusamano, who is a talk radio host in St. Louis on something called AM radio, I'll have to I'll have to look more into that medium to find out exactly what the heck that is supposed to mean. But in all seriousness, Frank Cusimano, a, a big name in the St. Louis radio scene. Well, he's reporting just on X today. Not sure if he talked to Eli Drinkwitz on his show or what, but he's saying that Eli Drinkwitz saying that Expect an announcement here in the next couple days that both Blake Baker, Missouri's defensive coordinator, and Kirby Moore, Missouri's offensive coordinator, will be returning for next season. So, to be quite honest with you, I wasn't. If I if you had to, if I was betting money, give me an even money bet a couple weeks ago on if both of those guys would come back. I don't think I would have taken it. So this is great news for Missouri. Just keeping one of those guys in the fold, I think, probably would have have to have been considered a win considering the type of season that Missouri had. And, well, Kirby Moore was rumored to be out there for some head coaching gigs, and so was Blake Baker. So I think maybe these two are still not real long for Missouri, but I think just to get them back for next season and what is really another crucial season for Missouri. Crucial, not in the way that 2023 was, in that it could have been a make, and make or break season for Eli Drinkwitz. Well, obviously it was beyond that. It was a total breakout season for Eli Drinkwitz and his program. So next season, with Luther Burden coming back, with Brady Cook coming back a lot of important pieces especially on the offensive side of the ball I think it's really critical for Missouri to come back and follow up with another really strong showing in 2024 so just the fact again you're getting Baker and more back next season how could I have expected that I'm certainly pleasantly surprised no doubt about that now, obviously, this news about Moore and Baker is a big deal for the Cotton Bowl this season as well, not just about next season, but of course, certainly if one of those guys had become a head coach, there's no way you could expect them to stick around and coach the Tigers during bowl season and up through the Cotton Bowl. That that's just wouldn't have been realistic whatsoever. So what does that mean? That means, once again, it seems like just Missouri has so much more continuity from the team that they played with in the regular season, moving into bowl season here, much more so than the Ohio State Buckeyes. Again, it'd be one thing if you were analyzing the Buckeyes and the Tigers as they were in the regular season. Hey, then we saw what that looked like when the line opened. Buckeyes favored by six and a half on a neutral field. Well, Tigers now still hanging in there. Minus two and a half point favorites as I record the podcast here on Friday afternoon. 
And speaking of the Cotton Bowl, I've seen a couple polls and questions online and, and some big debates online among Mizzou fans revolving around a rather simple question. If you could guarantee just one victory, which would it be? Would it be against Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl in football, or would it be in hoops tomorrow in Allen Fieldhouse against the Kansas Jayhawks? Well, obviously I can't speak for everybody, but for me, the answer is really obvious and it's not particularly close. It's got to be Kansas and Allen Fieldhouse to me. And again, I know for some of you, this is going to be a shock. And if that is, I'm going to tell you two reasons why I think you're disagreeing with me. Number one, maybe you just don't care about basketball. That, which is fine, by the way. There are certain people that just love Missouri football. Heck, I talked to somebody, Justin. Hey, Justin, what's up, man, if you happen to be listening? But I bought him lunch yesterday, and he was just telling me how, hey, he's a big-time football guy, just doesn't particularly care about basketball or baseball or anything else. Hey, that's fine. I totally get that. If you would rather, if you're picking Ohio, the, the Cotton Bowl there, completely understand. But I suspect there's a second group of Missouri fans who maybe are, say, 25 or younger, maybe 30 or younger, something like that, who just don't quite grasp what this rivalry really means to those of us who, again, are, are say, 30 or older, I would say. And, and I think these younger fans are going to get there eventually. I really do. I, I honestly do because, my goodness, I was actually scouting Kansas against Kansas City, their previous game. And when that game started, you know, just seeing seeing their fans get excited just reminded me actually how much I absolutely cannot stand Allen Fieldhouse, how much I hate that gigantic bird at midcourt, how much I absolutely cannot stand their uniforms. And most of all, I can't stand the absolutely horrific and dumb rock chalk Jayhawk Chan. It genuinely makes me want to commit an atrocity. And you know what? If you Kansas fans are listening to this and saying, well, guess what? We hate you too. Well, you know what? I would expect absolutely nothing less. And honestly, over the last 10 years or so, plus actually more than 10 years now, more like a dozen years at this point since Missouri left for the Southeastern Conference, so much has changed, not only with your Missouri fandom and just all the different coaches that Missouri has gone through, both in football and in basketball, but just the sports themselves, of course, with name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal, all this different stuff. Heck, we can even drink beer now at Mizzou games. What a, what a world. What a beautiful and magical world it truly can be. But seriously, the one thing I realized in even my own behavior at these Missouri games, since I was, say, 29 to what I am now at 40 years old, I'm actually a lot more calm and analytical, and I think in the stands as opposed to the, I don't know, raving lunatic that I could often be in my late 20s. I would be screaming at the officials as if I was trying my own podcast in the stands, probably much to the much to the dismay of my wife and everybody around me. But the one thing that hasn't changed in my older age, in my fatherhood, into marriage here and all that good stuff is, man, that KU rivalry it still gets the juices going. And honestly, I still get the watching a game in Allen Fieldhouse, watching a game in Allen Fieldhouse on television, I should say, still gives me the sort of same uneasy, uncomfortable, and yet fiery competitive feelings I got when I was 12 years old. It's, it's basically I'm a child all over again. So you know what? While so much has changed in this rivalry, over the last decade plus in college sports, Missouri in another conference, the whole thing. Well, you know what? When it comes to Missouri and Kansas, that rivalry, it's still real to me. Damn it. And now, with that emotional tirade out of the way, let's get a little bit more analytical and talk actual basketball on the court. Let's scout the Jayhawks and talk about how I think Missouri should approach this basketball game tomorrow. But first, I want to tell you about prize picks, which is the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports, in my humble opinion. You simply pick more or less on a combination of two to six player stat projections, 
in within a sport, intra or inter sports. You can pick different sports. Put Nikola Jokic and Patrick Mahomes in the same type of action, for example. And if you want to play along some side of prize picks, favorite players like rapper Meek Mill, for instance, well, now you can find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week here's my favorite pro here's my favorite part of prize picks by the way they offer you a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured so for football and basketball if you have a player who exits the first half and does not return in the second well that player is rebooted prize picks is the only dfs platform with an injury insurance policy so go to prizepicks.com com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars again that's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks that's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy and by the way just to put a couple ribbons on that ohio state versus at Kansas, that discussion on which game you would pick, hypothetically, if you could only guarantee one. First of all, to all the people saying, well, well, why can't I have both? Because it's a hypothetical question and you have to pick one. That, that's what we have to do here. It's called a trade-off. Yes, in a perfect world and in a uh, and in reality, clearly Missouri can win both of those games. One has nothing to do with the other. It was just more of a, hmm, just a thought experiment there. But regardless, also, as I was, I, I meant to say in that previous segment as well, a big part of my thinking there is that if it were 10 years ago, again, I was sort of using that 10 years ago, 12 years ago as a, a sort of marker for how much things have changed in a relatively short period of time throughout sports history here. Well, I, I think if it were 10 years ago, back when in a pre-college football playoff world where the Cotton Bowl meant more to teams like Ohio State, when you wouldn't have had as many opt-outs in bowl games, it now just seems like the non-college football playoff bowl games don't really mean a whole lot to most programs. And honestly, the last couple of years, you could say that about the Missouri football program. So on a bunch of different levels, no doubt, it's been refreshing to see the Missouri football program so far taking this Cotton Bowl game really, really seriously. And obviously that's why the line has moved about nine points toward Missouri's favored uh, since it opened. Obviously one of these teams is taking that game more seriously than the other. But as, as I said before, we got to start scouting the Kansas Jayhawks. And again, my big takeaway at the beginning of the Missouri Kansas City game, the UMKC Kangaroos, if you will, as they used to be known. Now they're just the Kansas City Roos, I guess. But anyway, of all the things that have changed, well, UMKC still not very good. I, I've I've figured that much out. But I also, wow, do I hate the Jayhawks. But anyway, let's just talk about real actual basketball. And of course, probably the biggest headliner this offseason, Hunter Dickinson, the transfer from Michigan center now for the Kansas Jayhawks. Boy, what a smart place for him to transfer, quite honestly. As much as I made fun of Dickinson yesterday for his, well, frankly, rather borderline and often dirty tactics so far on this young season in terms of hard fouls, that's about that's always a smart move for him. Being a big guy in the Bill Self system, not only that, Bill Self, an excellent basketball coach. Again, whatever you want to say about him, the guy understands the sport. There's no question about that. But on top of that, you've got former Rockbridge product, Dewan Harris, who is the absolute archetype for a pure point guard in modern college basketball here. Here's a guy who absolutely barely shoots, but when he does, he actually is pretty good at it. But more importantly here, more importantly to my point here, Harris is a guy who just sets everyone else up so beautifully and also makes Dickinson's life so much easier in particular. You see it so often now in college basketball. You see your rare big guys who can play with their back to the basket like Dickinson. So often now the entry pass and how to actually get the right angle 
and the right pass to a big man has become such a lost art. Well, Harris has certainly got all of those skills and then some. So a smart move, in my opinion, if you're going to try to develop your skills to be in the NBA like Dickinson obviously is. But he's not just, by the way, a low post guy, though he can seemingly finish with both hands around the basket. He's also a capable passer from the top of the key. And while kind of like Dewan Harris, he doesn't shoot a ton of three-pointers. When he does, he's pretty effective at making them. So that's definitely something that Missouri's rim protectors will have to be out, will have to be out on the look for when he's on the floor, without question. But you know what? When he's off the floor, guess who's going to check in probably for him about eh, maybe nine minutes into the first half or so? It's going to be former Missouri Tiger Parker Brown, who was, of course, a preferred walk-on back in the day under Conzo Martin. And you know what? Conzo Martin definitely deserves a lot of credit for discovering Parker for all intents and purposes and giving him that preferred walk-on status. But, you know, it was always a little bit odd that Parker was buried on the bench at Missouri, a team that, to me, always could have used a lot of times during you know, the Martin era, needed to change up its lineups a little bit, maybe find something a little bit different that's working. I know Sophie Cunningham was always on the please play Parker Brown more train, and boy, he sure seems to be fitting in with the Jayhawks right now just fine. Again, as Dickinson's primary backup, just seems very comfortable doing exactly what exactly what he does best in the Jayhawks system right now. And then speaking of people who look much improved, well, Kevin McCuller, you may remember him on last year's team. He sort of took a backseat, I would say, to some of the Jayhawks, other scorers last season. But McCuller, man, he just looks, again, Bill Self, say what you want. The guy knows how to coach. He seems to get these athletic wings, these athletic taller wings into this into his system. And whether or not they're the, you know, one and done guy immediately by the time they become sophomores and juniors, as McCuller has, suddenly he looks like much more of a a polished offensive product. And as you can tell here, I'm I'm certainly duly impressed by the Jayhawks so far. And if anything, you know, it, for his, his hyper speed, especially at the, the first half of the season, when Missouri played Kansas last year, they were still in hyper speed mode. Well, the Tigers' tempo slowed as the season went on for sure. and But this season so far, it's actually kind of night and day if you just look at adjusted tempo. The Tigers are 275th nationally so far. That's actually below average just in terms of the amount of possessions that Missouri has. Though I will say that's much more based on Missouri's defense so far than its offense because Missouri's actually been elite statistically in terms of stretching out the length of possessions for the defense. So the Tigers are putting token pressure, making you take a take a few extra seconds to get the ball up the court after they get a bucket. And that really seems to be paying dividends defensively for Missouri so far. And in my opinion, again, this may seem a little bit counterintuitive considering how Dennis Gates team played last season, but I think the Tigers should actually slow it down a little bit when they can. Don't get me wrong, get out there and run when there's an opportunity if you get a steal, a live ball turnover, that type of thing. But when Kansas makes a shot, you know, I don't think Missouri needs to go out of its way to try to speed up the game as much as it possibly can because the Jayhawks, again, Dickinson, a good passer from the top of the keys, also a good outlet passer. Harris, such a good decision maker in the open court. When Kansas gets in the open court, it's just going to be a, I think it'll be a tough game for Missouri to keep up with this particular squad. So I don't exactly expect a Missouri victory on tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, as you can probably tell from my tone here. Not saying it's impossible, though, whatsoever. Considering the type of team that Missouri is, I wonder I wonder if Missouri's shot blocking and size in general, particularly Connor Vanover, I wonder if they can bother Dixon a little bit. That may be a plus for the Tigers. If not, could be a long night for Missouri, no doubt. Also, hey, when Missouri shoots a ton of three-pointers, they can also make a ton, too, and that's obviously a big-time equalizer. And coming up on the program, I want to talk about, in my opinion, the death of SportsCenter 
and how it's hurt college basketball. But you know what? First, I want to tell you that passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts, for your number one, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Motors guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that victory. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, in what seems to be a running theme on today's podcast, let's talk more about the changing sports landscape. And I think one of the biggest things that's changed in the last decade plus here is the slow but sure but sure death of sports center yes i'm being a little bit hyperbolic with death on sports center of course but in terms of actual cultural impact and reach it really is night and day compared to when i was growing up in the 90s or even deep into my college years or even past that you know, in, into the into the aughts, the the early part of this millennium here, the first decade, I should say, Sports Center was still a really big deal, and I don't know exactly when that changed, but it felt like kind of when Twitter started to become big around maybe 2010 or so, when lots of people would suddenly start hi- uploading highlights from various different sports onto Twitter, and suddenly you didn't really feel the need to sit through an entire hour longs version of sports center as my me and my forefathers did back in the day no now you can just look at your phone have sort of a if not an algorithmic feed a feed that is actually specifically tailored by you only the people that you follow hey maybe you follow great mlb catches or something like that or hey, incredible college hoops dunks or whatever it might be and now suddenly well you're missing a lot of different things maybe you're not a fan of tennis but I bet you knew a lot more 10 to 15 years ago about what was happening at Wimbledon or the U.S. Open. Well, for instance, I think a lot of these what you would call fringe sports that really are, of, por- of course, a part of Americana and mainstream sports, but they're not they're not the NFL right? They're certainly not college football. They're not even the NBA, which I think has suffered from a little bit of this phenomenon even, but not as much as Major League Baseball and especially to me, college basketball. The last 10 years or so has really been hurt by the death of SportsCenter, by the fact that just fewer and fewer people are watching SportsCenter and just highlight-filled type half-hour to hour-long shows in general. Now people, for the most part, not only are you getting 100% of your local team's content whenever you want it, for instance, if you're a Kansas City Royals or a St. Louis Cardinals or a St. Louis Blues fan, if you live in Columbia, Missouri or anywhere close to those markets, it's quite easy to get all of those games on your cable package, your satellite package, your YouTube TV, whatever it might be. So not only are you seeing that, but you don't even really feel obligated or to watch SportsCenter or anything like that anymore. So my point is you're missing a lot of the ancillary sports. And that stuff is, I think, I think that's hurting these ancillary sports. And even if you think about how the NFL works now, Last night, I I giggled when I saw that the Patriots and the Steelers was the big Amazon Prime game last night. Well, I didn't even decide to turn that game on for one second because I was much more interested in watching the NBA's in-season tournament, those elimination semifinal games last night. Well, maybe I would have flipped back and forth a little bit more, but now that's a cumbersome process of going between, oh, my DirecTV stream app, and now I got to go to Amazon Prime, wait for a 
20 seconds for that to boot up, whatever it might be. I'm sorry, it's just not quite as satisfying of a process as it used to be. It basically, the NFL wants to lock you into their content and not really let you watch anything else, apparently. That's great business for them, but I do worry sometimes about how, how do you discover the new sports, the new teams, the new players that you might be into when you're not able to just channel surf and watch Sports Center and see random highlights that you otherwise wouldn't have looked for, right? It's sort of the difference between finding music on the radio when it's sort of tailored by, by somebody who, a DJ, somebody who knows m- music, maybe knows the type of music that you might like, but again, it's not, it's not an algorithm. It's not something that's just spitting you something back, the exact same thing that you want over and over again. And I just worry a little bit about people getting so locked into their, their sport and their team that they're missing the bigger sort of beautiful picture of, of everything that is sport, in my humble opinion. And I think one of the biggest, if not the biggest, loser of this process has been college basketball. Because again, before March Madness, there's so much college basketball to consume, but it's just hard to narrow down what really matters, what really is special, what were the exciting moments. And I think that's something that Sports Center used to do very, very well. Heck, they might still do it well, but unfortunately, unlike most of America, I've tuned out of the programming. But hey, thank you so much for not tuning out of this programming here. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And for your second listen, definitely check out Locked On Sports today, the first national 24-7 live sports streaming show on the internet. So again, Locked On Sports today, check it out on YouTube. So until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.